everybody, it's T-Squared, day three, Comic-Con in San Diego 2012, and I'm here at the Nerd HQ, and this is where the party's at. We got exclusive hands-on with Gears of War Judgment, which is dropping in March 2013. And I got Kelly, Mrs. Violence Kelly down there with Quinn, the lead multiplayer designer from Epic. Let's head down there and see what's up with the new map, Island. All right, the two people that I want to see. All right, I'm here with Quinn, the lead multiplayer designer from Epic. He makes this happen, and he came up with this new game type, Overrun. Quinn, can you tell me a little bit about Overrun and give me a little bit of tip, a, a quick multiplayer tip for new Gears of War players? Uh, yeah, Overrun is our asymmetrical, class-based multiplayer game mode. It's the first time we've had a game mode like that in Gears of War where you have uh, distinct classes. And if you want to talk about a tip, uh, my favorite tip is you've got the uh, certain classes that can climb up to different areas of the map, but we, the, the, the trick here is that the ticker, he can be kicked, right? So he's not supposed to be up in those areas, but really savvy players will kick the ticker up into those areas where usually they're not supposed to go. So you get really cool surprise attacks of guys kicking tickers up into the, the sneaky areas, the scout and wretch areas. That's really cool. Is that something that you guys plan on implementing? Are there going to be more type of things where you can go and you remember weapon sliding and those little cool things that you could do? I know that's not something that you look for in a game, but since you're implementing cool little things like that, does all that come into when you're designing a map and creating something that you want to be competitive? Yeah, so, that, you know, when we think about it, like Gears has had three games before this, and so there's a lot of stuff, like you just mentioned, weapon sliding, all that stuff, that were exploits in a way, but then we look at it, okay, so how do we how do we utilize that in the game? Do we want to, do we even want to utilize that? Do we want to leave it in there? Do we want to make it an, an official design? And so we look at uh, like just the pacing of this game and how we want to get people to play, not necessarily the weapon sliding stuff, but the, the tips and the tricks of, of uh, how should you say, attacking the generator as fast as possible. So when you look at right here with uh, Miss Violence, she's playing Island, which is our we're debuting this map here at Comic-Con, and it's, uh, it's, it looks a lot different than rooftops than what you saw at E3. It's much more outdoors, not urban, and the, the cool thing about this version that we're showing, this is actually what the, the uh, maps will play like when the, when the game comes out next March, and that is there's three objectives. So I don't know if you remember at E3, there's just one objective. We made it nice and small. And here, there's three objectives. So there's one objective that the attackers try to get with a time limit, and if the uh, defenders don't hold them off, then they get that, and then they now control that territory, and then time is added to the clock, and then you fight for the next area, the next objective. And so it's this sequence of events through three objectives, and that's what, what we have going on here is the first time at Comic-Con people are playing the, uh, the full version, a full version of one of the maps that we're shipping with the game. And this map is absolutely amazing. You guys are so smart when it comes down to the initial spawns. When you make a game like this, you spawn people in a certain point and then all kind of race to a middle area so you can make sure that it's balanced? Uh, yeah, that's what we, what we actually have with that. Is these maps, we looked at inspiration for other games, really good multiplayer games, and how can we use that in the Gears of War um, realm? And so we look at games like, say, League of Legends and even StarCraft, you know, the games that you don't necessarily think of looking at when you're building a shooter, but League of Legends especially has those three lanes. And so we wanted to make the, the intensity really high in this game. So we actually have every map pretty much has two core lanes, a left and a right. So that, that has two, two benefits there. One, it makes it really accessible for, for players to hop in, like new players. Like, hey, day 30, I heard people playing this game and I'm gonna hop in, I'm not gonna be at a total disadvantage of people that know all the ins and outs of the map. There's just two lanes. But also, that provides a lot of depth to really good organized teams, like pushes, push left, push right, distraction on the left, excuse me, and it makes it really good, uh, it's really good for watching as well. So you talk competitive, it makes it really awesome to watch. Exactly, so let's get into spectator mode a little bit, because out of the three main shooters that hold it down for console, for, you know, for Xbox, you got Halo, you got, Gears of War and you have Call of Duty. Those yeah. are the three big dogs. Yeah. And your game is going to potentially be the only game with the possibility of a spectator mode. It's been not it hasn't been confirmed for Halo 4. I'm not sure what's going on with Black Ops 2. Yeah. What are you guys going to do about that? 
That's something that, uh, you know, we, we brought spectator mode in for uh, Gears of War 3 post-launch because people wanted it, you know. We want, you know, people, things like Twitch is blowing up. People are, are, are uh, creating content with that. And competitive, like Gears of War, is, its roots have been really good with competitive. And we want people to be able to watch it because it's a third-person game. It's really fun to watch that way. So we're not necessarily talking about spectator mode for Gears of War Judgment, or at least confirming it. But needless to say, it was a big success for Gears of War 3, and it's something that we want you to stay tuned for. And I would love to watch that whole match from spectator mode right now. Mrs. Violence, how are you liking Gears of War Judgment? After, especially since you got the Gears of War tattoo on the right ankle. I'm loving it. I mean, this is awesome. It, like, opening up this map and getting the ability to, you know, defend three other objectives, it can get insane. I mean, I'm going to be some locust right now, so I'm going to destroy some base, but that was intense. And, yeah, I can, I can see how people can just jump in, pick a class. It's very descriptive, very easily, and just go and just play and have and, a blast. And something that you guys came out with today, actually, is a video that I got to see at E3, and we weren't able to film this. We did a segment, a Gears of War segment. Type it in on the top of GameSpot.com, and you'll see her going against Team Quinn and <laughs> mopping him on the floor. But So you guys dropped a video out today that's almost like a tutorial, and it immediately explains what Overrun's about and how Gears of War has completely changed from 3. Can you talk about that video a little bit? Yeah, it's... Uh... You, you can find it anywhere we released it. It's, it's a tutorial video that's narrated by uh, Damon Baird, who's the main character for this game. And it's actually pretty freaking hilarious how he, he talks about each of the classes. He breaks it down in a simple manner. There's special abilities. And he also there's a little bit of uh, in-depth teamwork about trying to emphasize that this isn't a game where it's all about like one, one man show, one a hero, right? You gotta really work together and, and use your, your teamwork and your classes. And see right here, Miss Violence climbing up there is the wretch. The wretch can climb up there and use the her scream ability. She just cringed that scout. So you get these really like duels between the the uh, the scout and the wretch because they're the only two guys, unless you're sneaky getting tickers up there, like we talked about earlier, they're the only two guys that go up there and battle. So that's what's awesome about this, is these epic battles just between these two, but there's a whole other uh, conflict going on over the objective that is in a different area, see? If you look down there, there's people battling it out. And it's always intense, that's what, so when Miss Violent said that, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's always intense, it's it's white knuckle, the pacing is absolutely insane. And it's and it's balanced, but it's, it's, bal it's balanced to the point where it's just so in depth and it's just so mind-blowing, and I'm so impressed. I see the influence from other games. I see a little bit of League. I see a little Left 4 Dead there, and I'm just I'm so impressed with the Gears of War multiplayer. In March 2013, if you haven't pre-ordered it, you got to pick it up already. And talk, talk about a little bit about the other maps that are coming out. Is there going to be downloadable content? Or what are you guys looking to do? Mini transact, micro transactions. You know, we talked about League of Legends a little bit. And the, tutor the tutorial video that you did, do you guys plan on, you know, for example, when you go and select a character in League of Legends, okay? It tells you exactly what the QWER does. And that's a little bit of what that video that you guys launched today, that, that's making it more friendly and people can just jump into the game. Yeah. Yeah, so as far as downloadable content, again, that's, that's something we'll, we'll talk about at a later time. But it's something that you'll find uh, very similar to previous Gears of War titles. And also with, with, with character selection, all of that, again, like for this demo, we're only showing off the, the four core classes of the Locust, the four core classes of the Cog, as well as the four big baddie guys that we like to call uh, for the Locust that you could unlock based on skill. So if you were to choose, when you're, when you're on the Cog side, who would you choose for the Cog side and why? If you're on the Locust side, who, who's your go-to guy on the Locust side and why? All right. That's, uh, when I when I play Cog, it's 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 kind of funny. I, I play the I like the sniper guy. He's called the Scout, and I really like it because he's got the beacon grenade. And what that is, again, you guys should go check that video out. It's uh it's uh the the Scout grenade. What it does is it does this big like this ping, this big radar pulse, and it automatically spots or tags uh, enemies through walls, whatever. It doesn't matter where they are. But the really cool thing is that you may not know is. Anyone that is tagged by that grenade, it uh, it makes them susceptible to more damage or debuff, as you could say, right? And, and gaming is so you can bring big baddies in here like Miss Bossy. She's got the corpser, and if I was Whoa. on the hog side, I would uh, say, hey, we got a corpser coming on the right lane right now. We're gonna need a debuff now. And so the scout would throw the grenade out there, 
debuff him and then everyone focus fire and try to take him down because he'd take extra damage. So the scout is definitely what I like on the cog side. Now, if we're talking Locust, uh, I really like the medic guy, which is the Cantus. And I like him because he's really, uh, like, health-wise, he's pretty weak and frail, but he's really agile. And his weapon, the Hammer Burst, it's our, it's our next uh, version of it. We've been working on it uh, throughout the different games, and this is by far the best version of the Hammer Burst you have, we will ever play in a Gears of War game. And to properly use it, you actually have to burst it, right? You have to shoot three shots off, calm it down a little bit, and if you are accurate, you will actually pop domes. You will get the headshot. And so he's really awesome to try to counter the sniper, and I like that guy. Plus, he can really, uh, his healing ability is really powerful. How it, like, uh, for instance, if I'm trying to heal you, you're closest to me, and Lady Violence, she's farther away from me, it'll go from you and chain off of you to her, even though I won't necessarily reach her. So it has this chaining ability with the heal. So that's that's what I really like about the Cantus. And you got to know all these things and you got to know how to counter them, which which is so great. You can jump right into it, but then as you play, you're just constantly learning, you're constantly unlocking new things. Is, it, is that what's going to happen? The more you play, the more you unlock? Is that something you guys are going for? Yeah, we're looking uh, definitely into a, a progression system again. Uh, kind of lip sealed on that, but uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned, guys. We got four minutes left in this game, and Kelly is just going absolutely ham on everybody. How much fun is this game on a scale of one to ten? Like, I would have to say a nine. The only thing is, it's a very team-based game, and when you get stuck with teammates that don't know what they're doing, or they've never played Gears, it's a little challenging. Like you said, it was kind of like a little Left 4 Dead feel. You kind of got that vibe, and it's just insane. So I'm going to go ahead and burrow. There's just so much going on all at once. And what's, what's so impressive is there is so much going on at once, but it's never laggy. You never get any frame rate, ne it, it never drops, it's never laggy in certain corners or when there's giant explosions and a lot of people fighting. How, how do you guys do that? How do you guys master it in such an early build? Dude, we've got some serious wizards at Epic Games that have been working with the Unreal Engine 3 for a while, and they know how to, how to squeeze every bit of juice out of, out of optimization with the, the materials on the walls and all the... The, the models we put in, the decorative meshes and things. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. Like me as being a multiplayer designer, I don't necessarily do all that, but I'm amazed every day when I go to work and I see how these guys, like this to me looks like we could put it on the shelf and people buy it. It doesn't even look like a demo. It looks, looks incredible, like you said. That's what I'm saying. When, when we first heard the bomb, when we saw it right before E3, we saw you know that picture and we we're like, what the heck? We go there and you could play the game already. That's what's so impressive is you know, you're not just giving us a little tease like Black Ops. You're like, we're here, we're going hard. This is our game. This is how it's gonna play, and you're gonna love it. And I, and I absolutely, I absolutely love the game. It's absolutely amazing. You guys did such a great job. Let's talk a little bit about weapon placement. Where do you plan on placing the weapon? Is it gonna be in the middle? You know, like typical, you know, gridlock back in the day where the boom shot was. How how much does weapon placement come into the map design? Well, for Overrun, actually, there is uh, currently no weapon placement because every class has their own specific loadout. Um, so yeah, there's not a necessarily the traditional weapon layout, but the, it's, 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 what you could kind of liken it to is the objectives and how we lay them out. You know, okay. it's, it's pretty much uh, each objective that's in the center. And so you got the two lanes that lead to the objectives, the left and the right. And at first we were kind of putting the, the objective in kind of places that are a little too, I would say defensive for the cog. And that was, it really made a bad imbalance of COG were always dominating. And it felt really bad where you're the locust and you're just getting shut out. Because as soon as you break through the defenses, you can't even get the objective. So we wanted to put more pressure on COG players to be, if they're really good, they could hold it and they could defend it. And that's that's what we were trying to go for. And see like here, see like they just, they just got it right here. Now we're going to check out the the time limit it comes down to time who did it faster for the for the demo that's how we're measuring win versus so loss. so both teams took out the generator at their oh I lost right. I, gave, I gave it my all <laughs> uh, okay a bit of difference there okay well I know that she was playing pretty well it's hard to play and get interviewed at the same time I'm telling you firsthand but that's it for us day three Comic Con it's a wrap man I hope you had as much fun as I had Gears of War Judgment is coming down in March 2013. Make sure that you pick that thing up. It is sick. Quinn, you're the man. Thank you so much. Yep. You're changing multiplayer, man. You're doing it big. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you.